Well, you see, this is this is funny because they just when, lied. I, when I went to the meeting on this, oh, well. I was paying attention to oh, no. the favorability. Yeah, they changed change. these things last right. used to be we could shut them off. Yeah, because you got to come and, back and up hard. I did. I told him. I said, you, you got a hard road. Right. And he, he didn't listen to some people on a few things. And that statute thing didn't help him there neither. Right, because they just the expanded the bridge. They have continued Murphy's Law the and, fall. and I always I believe it. So mm -hmm. I I saw when there was that many people down there, they, right. were, they were bound and determined to do something. For the no peculiar reason. Mm -hmm. The pool was just a mess this afternoon from mm -hmm. windows all the way up to yeah, the gas uh, station. Yeah. And like, You're talking about on Bryant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's just crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I still say he should have went out. How you doing? I've got your right to protest, but for, we're not going to put your hands on it. Somebody's going to jail. And if it takes 100, if I have to call the city, the National Guard, or whatever, it's a right. right. Let it go, you know. I, I didn't see that. Is the mic going? Yeah. You know, but I, you know. I mean, that's, that's so funny. Like told me, he said, all I hear go on what was presented. I mean, so, I had to go on what was presented to me. And that's, you know. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. <laughs> well, that, that hurt him, though. Okay. Yeah, man. What are you doing here for? <laughs> Probably have it six more. What's up, Dad? Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a, we had a lot going on at work. I, I just I had too I'm much. Sure retired. No, I've been I'm working full time again. I retired. Yeah, after thirty years in the sheriff's office. We built that old house and old legacy. We might just sit and do it all day. We're going right to work. I had no idea. But good for you. law enforcement? Or? No, no, I got out. I'm, I'm t I went to work for Orange County Schools maintenance. Oh, wow. Custodian up at uh, Grady Brown Elementary wow. School. Outstanding. I go in about 5.30 in the morning, and, you know, I'm done usually by about 1.52. So you were morning person. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm glad I went here for the sign of the scrap, because I, didn't, I, I would have voiced my opinion on that. I don't know it's a bunch of mm -hmm. crap. Jenkins Light, we can wait. Yeah. Not in my hair. I'm good. Mm. How are you? How is your family? Let's go see. It's twenty eight hours. All right. I'll take that as a good sign. Okay. Let's go see it tomorrow. All right. Council level on that. It was almost 11 o'clock. Yeah, I figured that was going to be long. American time. We had that was the week right before school. The teachers came back, and we had, I had to get a commission on that. I wish we could need it. Need it. Oh, that guy. Mm -hmm. So, Nate is a great guy. Mm -hmm. I'm just a professional mm -hmm. Does any go down? Mm -hmm. okay. It took Mills. Yeah. Well, it's too much for those. What we don't have is somebody to represent Mills' point of view. We don't. <laughs> we don't want to say it worse. Yeah. yeah. Keep it. Maybe it was a worse thing. You mean the plan? Exactly. Yeah, that would be it. Yeah. The um, comments that were made here or desires no, that were here. They're, they're uh, commercial. What about the town? Okay. Yeah. 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 And so they have to go back to the headquarters. Yeah. 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 And so it is moving away. I think I would prefer to see the plan. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We're going to take just a minute before we actually open the meeting and give our new commissioner an opportunity to say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, hello. Um, I am Nate Baker. I was born and raised in Durham, North Carolina and went through uh, Durham public school system and then studied urban and regional planning at Cornell, became a public sector planner in Texas for two years before coming back and getting my master's degree in city and regional planning at UNC. And since then, I've been at Clarion Associates in Chapel Hill. Um, we do comprehensive plans, land development regulations, and those types of things. So I'm happy to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we have just a brief delay before we start the meeting. Um, our chair is stuck in traffic, and um, we're waiting for some introductory papers. So we still have just a, a minute before we actually get started. Perhaps some of our other commissioners would like to introduce themselves to our newest commissioner. Who's joining us tonight for the first time? Well, commissioner. We I'll start with Commissioner Al Turk. What are we doing here? I'm sorry. We're, we're doing we're just a little ourselves. brief introductions oh. to our newest <laughs> commissioner who is joining us for the first time tonight. Yeah, well, we just spoke, um, and uh, my name is Akram Al Turk. Uh, I've been in Durham for a few years. I'm um, Working on my doctoral, or I'm working on my PhD in um, at UNC Chapel Hill, and yeah, I've been here a couple of years, a few years on the commission. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Cedric Johnson. I, this month is the first month of year three for my first term on the planning commission. I uh, have been in Durham since 2012, I think. I'm getting old here. Uh, and uh, my professional work is in the economic development finance space. I'm George Bryan. I'm a county appointee to the Planning Commission. I've lived in Durham since late 1967, and uh, I have served off and on on Planning Commission since sometime in the mid-1990s. I'm Erin Durkin. This is my third meeting as a planning commissioner. Um, I grew up in Wake County. I actually work in New York. I'm a lawyer and I have a planning degree and I represent affordable housing developers in New York City. And my name is Elaine Hyman and um, this is my second, beginning of my second term. Um, I am retired from Durham County government. So this is like, um, home for me. I'm a county appointee, and um, I am um, retired HR director from Durham County Government, so I bring a little bit of that administrative policy to the organization, to our group. Tom? So my name is Tom Miller, and I've been on the Planning Commission for four years. I've lived in Durham all my life. Uh, before I retired, I spent uh, over 30 years with the Department of Justice here in North Carolina handling land use uh, regulatory questions. Hey, my name is Armia Kenjin, and uh, I am starting my second term as a county appointee. And I've lived in Durham for 20 years now, and I raised all three of my children here and considered it to be my home. So excited to meet you. I'm Paul Hornbuckle. I'm a retired lieutenant with the Durham Sheriff's Office. I've been in uh, Durham all my life. I'm a county appointee representing the uh, Mangum Township, which is the Rougemont and Bahama areas, and have been in that, you know, part of uh, basically all my life. And this is uh, going into the end of my first term, uh, starting my third year. Okay, Commissioner Williams. Carmen Williams, Durham native, um, lifer in Durham. I think I came in on the back end of someone else's term, so I'm starting my first term. I'm not sure of that, but um, that's about it. I work for an architecture firm, actually two architecture firms in Durham, so. Thank you. I think we can officially get started. Um, good afternoon and welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council 
and the County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. Um, you should know that the elected officials have the final say on any issue before us tonight. If you wish to speak on an agenda item tonight, please go to the table to my left and sign up to speak. For those of you who wish to speak, speak please state your name, your address, clearly when you come to the podium. Please speak clearly and into the microphone. Each side, those speaking in favor of an item and those speaking in opposition to an item will have 10 minutes uh, to present for each side. The time has been divided among all persons wishing to speak. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative. So if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. Uh, may we have the roll call, please? Yes, I'm going to do it from here, if that's okay with everyone. Yes, please. Um, Commissioner Alturk? Here. Commissioner Baker? Here. Commissioner Bryan? Here. Commissioner Busby is uh, running a little bit late, but he is on his way. Um, Commissioner Durkin? Here. Uh, Commissioner Gibbs has requested an, an excused absence, so when we get to the end, maybe you can make a motion to that effect. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hornbuckle? Present. Commissioner Hyman? Present. Commissioner Johnson? Present. Commissioner Keenchin? Present. Commissioner Miller? Here. Commissioner Satterfield? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. And um, late breaking just a few minutes ago, I received notice that Mr. Um, or Commissioner Van has resigned from the commission. He's got some other um, duties to fulfill and can't uh, serve at this time, so he will not be here tonight. And so I just wanted to let you know, I just found that out. Madam Chair, if it's appropriate, I move that we uh, grant an excused absence to uh, Commission Member Gibbs. And I suppose we probably, since we only have two cases, um, Commission Member Busby. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we offer excused absences to Commissioner Gibbs and Commissioner Busby. All in favor of this motion, let it be known by raising your right hand. All opposed? Um, if for some reason um, Chair Busby shows up, then we'll, we'll note that you. he is in attendance. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the first item, uh, approval of the minutes and consistency statements from the August 14, 2018 meeting. Yeah, have a... Uh, Madam Chair recognizes Commissioner Bryan. Madam Chair, I move approval of the minutes and the consistency statements as presented. Second. Sec Motion by Commissioner Bryan, second by Commissioner Hornbuckle. Was I correct? Was it Commissioner Horn? Yes. That we approve the um, minutes and consistency statements for the April, for the August 14 meeting. Uh, all in favor of this motion, please let it be known by raising your right hand. All opposed? Thank you. Uh, the first item that we have, um, public hearing zone map changes. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Before we get there, I want to uh, just let you know that under new business, I have two minor items. Yes. And having said that, unless there are no other adjustments to the agenda, I move the agenda as amended. Um, could you um, maybe let us know what the items are? And I also need to speak to the advertisements and uh, legal notice. Right. So what are your, what are your items that you're adding? Uh, one will be uh, just an announcement about an NCDOT project that I think commissioners will be interested in. And the second is going to be my request for an excused absence for next month. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem. <laughs> All right, and um, at this time, I would like to let the commission know that um, the, all the cases for public hearings tonight have been advertised um, in accordance with local and state law, and affidavits for such are on file in the planning department. Thank you. Thank you. So then I have a motion to approve the agenda with adjustments. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Bryan, second by Commissioner Miller, that we approve the minutes with adjustments. All in favor of this motion, let it be known by the usual sign of aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Thank you. Our first item, public hearing, item number Z180011 Barbie Road Townhouse. We'll have our staff report at this time. Good evening. 
I'm Jamie Sonyak with the Planning Department. I will be presenting case number Z180011, Barbie Road, 54 townhouses. Uh, before I get started, there were two corrections in the staff report. Um, there was a, an incorrect reference to the number of units, um, so I made that correction. And also, uh, there was a um, corrected reference to a legacy case uh, on page two. The applicant for this case is Jared Edens from Edens Land. The address is 107 East North um, NC 54, uh, 6452 Barbie Road. The property is located within the city's jurisdiction. The request for rezoning is from Commercial General with a development plan to Commercial General with a development plan. The site is 14.38 acres. <clears throat> the property is located within the commercial FLOM. There is no request to change that. Um, the applicant is seeking to rezone uh, specifically to allow 112 townhouse units. This slide depicts the aerial mapping and the subject sh site is shown in red. It's two properties located on the west side of Barbie Road um, on the north side of NC 54. It is located within the suburban tier and within the Cape Fear River Basin. The smaller property is, um, and these, I'm sorry, in these slides depict some of the pictures of the area. The smaller property is uh, just under one acre in size and is vacant. And the larger property is about 13 acres in size and contains a number of existing residential structures, um, a, nursery, a nursery sales building, several greenhouses, um, all of which will be removed if the site is developed. There are a number of pictures also within the staff report that show area conditions. Um, the site is adjacent to the Greens of Pine Glen residential development. Um, there is a cell tower also to the west. Um, to the north is um, the interstate highway. Uh, the property to the west was recently approved to allow a self-storage um, building up to 120,000 square feet in size. Uh, to the southeast is a gas station, um, which is uh, also undergoing a rezoning application, which will be in front of the Planning Commission, um, ideally in October. On, on the north side of uh, NC 54, um, south of the property, west and south of the property, there's a single family residential neighborhood. The Seasons at South Point Memory Care Community. There's also the Meadows at South Point Residential Development on the east side um, of Barbie Road, south of the site. Um, and then abutting the site um, on the north side of 54, there are also additional residential developments, South Point Towns and um, 54 Station. The zoning context map shows the existing and proposed um, zoning designation, so the colors have not changed. On the left side, you'll see the proposed, um, the, the existing zoning is CG, and uh, the proposed zoning on the right side is also CG. The future land use map, there is no request to change that. Um, the property is currently designated commercial, which is consistent with the rezoning request. The next slide shows the um, development plan, and I'll just highlight some of the conditions. Um, the max impervious coverage uh, is at 70% um, proposed, a tree preservation requirement of 20%, and there are various um, minimum side yards, rear yards, and, um, and different setbacks shown on the development plan. Summary of the key commitments, um, the development plan limits the townhouse units um, to a maximum of 112 units. There are uh, various site access points, um, building and parking envelopes, um, various transportation improvements and roadway improvements, and design commitments relative to um, the building materials uh, and roof and features. In terms of consistency with the comp plan, the, it is consistent with the existing commercial future land use map designation. 
uh, and also consistent with policies 231A, contiguous development, 232A, infrastructure capacity, um, 812H, transportation level of service maintenance, 814D, development review and adopted regional bicycle plans, and 1111B, adequate school facilities. Staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances, and I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. I apologize for my tardy arrival. I want to thank Vice Chair Hyman for getting us kicked off and running smoothly as usual. Uh, at this point, we would open the public hearing. And we have one individual signed up to speak for the proposal, Mr. Jared Edens. Good evening. Uh, Jared Edens with Edens Land, uh, here representing the property owner. I appreciate Jamie's summary of our project, and I'll just uh, summarize a couple of key points. As Jamie mentioned, we were here about a year ago for a retail rezoning on this same site. Uh, Planning Commission and Council both approved retail zoning at that time. What happened after that time was the market never really developed for the retail center. It just never came to pass like we thought. The next highest and best use, in our opinion, was townhomes. There was definitely a market for townhomes. So we started investigating that possibility, and um, that's brought us here before you today. Uh, so as Jamie mentioned, about 112 units. Uh, this would be a much less impactful request than what we had a year ago. I think we're reducing our trips by about 8,300 trips by going from retail to townhomes. Our water usage is way down. Um, everything is down generally. Uh, we did have we had a neighborhood meeting last week. Uh, voluntary. We only had one person show up from the immediate uh, neighborhood. We don't have any opposition that I'm aware of, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thanks. Thank you. And this is the opportunity if anyone else would like to speak during the public hearing. And seeing none, I'll move to close the public hearing and see if there are any questions or comments from the commissioners. We'll start on my right. Any questions or comments? Commissioner Alturk, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. I have a question for Jamie. Um, so you mentioned that there will be a rezoning case before us next month, possibly, the gas station. Can you say a little bit more about that or what you, what that's, just the broad contours of that? Contour? Yeah, the, the rezoning case, um, involves uh, um, upgrades to an existing Shell oil station um, located on the southeast corner of that intersection. Um, they are increasing the number of um, bays uh, on the existing site. There will be some um, improvements to uh, intersection access points, um, and there will be no increase um, per se in terms of a convenience uh, store. It'll still remain as a pay station. Um, so it's it's really to improve, increase the number of bays and the applicant can speak for themselves when they come, but um, they are also hoping that that will alleviate some of the existing traffic um, congestion within that area. I see. So the traffic impact will be Minimal or zero, or what's uh, in terms of? I, I mean, you don't. Off the top of my head, I, I couldn't um, okay. provide you with that information, but. Okay. Thank you. I, I guess I'm asking because in attachment six, you mentioned the all of you know if all of the new developments that are going up, it would it's going to increase the the traffic um, to more than or 110 percent of capacity, um, but that's below the 120 percent that would um, be not in compliance with the comprehensive plan. Um, so I, I guess that's good to hear that this rezoning is not going to increase traffic there. Um, I, so thank you for that. And one more question, um, and I'll ask it both to Jared and to Jamie. So let me... Uh, the the uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission, in their first question, um, asked why, and I think this is a good question, why 
are we, you know, why is CG zoning for a for townhomes? Um, I, I understand that that's allowed, um, but you know, when I look at the rezoning map, it's very colorful. Um, we have deep pink and light pink, and we have office institutional or industrial, sorry, to the east of this, although it has townhomes. And I guess I'm curious if that's going to be addressed at some point, or is that something that's common in uh, planning that we just have a commercial designation, but we have a bunch of townhomes in it? It just seems like that's incongruent or doesn't well, the, the, the previous application for the site amended the zoning to become commercial general with a development plan. There was no residential as part of that application. The current applicant is interested in building residential, which is permitted within that zone, but they are specifically committing to residential. So essentially, um, it, it is a commercial future land use map, which uh, coincides with that, but they are specifically committing to residential. I, I guess a more specific question, is there a reason not to encourage a PDR or something else from the planning department? It's the applicant's request in terms of what they're seeking. Okay, can you, I'm just curious, since we have a lot of time today. <laughs> Honestly, just for simplicity as much as anything else. I mean, okay. we're already CGD before. I actually have another zoning you're going to see in three or four months. It's townhomes on a CG zoned parcel okay. in another part of town. So it's something we've done before, and we will be doing a little bit down the road. But just for simplicity as much as anything else. Okay. Just to keep it CGD. Okay. Well, I don't have any questions. Uh, Great, thank you. Thank Commissioner you. Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so just a quick response to that. Uh, I, I initially had the, the same question, uh, the latter question that was just asked, and I tend to agree, uh, I, I tend to agree with the logic of that it makes sense that if we, if the applicant can do residential within the commercial uh, zoning as it is, because even in the case that the future land use is updated to make that residential, then it becomes more in conformity to what's around it, but an applicant would still have to come before a commission at some point if they wanted to reprogram that site. But the development is just so, is large enough, I think that it'd be just too costly to like tear that down and, and send them. So I had that, that, that concern, but I think that what is being proffered and committed to here addresses the, what could potentially happen to that site if we kept it the way that it is commercial and the future land use map is, is another concern. Uh, some rambling on that one. Um, my question is one for Jared, just to be, uh, to try to gain some clarity on the price point for the townhomes. Do you have a sense of what, what that range will be or in some kind of um, relative to what's around it, the, uh, the site? Yeah, I mean, it, all I can say is market rate which is what people say, right? But in this market, the rate changes pretty often. So I'm not, I'm not really in the business of trying to guess what the sales price is gonna be for units because things are changing all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's just a market rate product, I can tell you. It'll be comparable to what's been constructed across the road in the uh, Pulte development across the road, comparable to that. The, the market the size is- size of homes. I got you, I got you. And uh, just a comment on the, the gas station question that, that uh, my colleague referenced. I will note that that, is, that that tends to be a concern to me as well, and we'll hear about it on, in the next, uh, the next meeting. But what I will share, and it has, it has some tangential uh, implications on our decision here, is that what tends to happen is there's only like two or three bays right now, but uh, people are coming from both ways on these two lanes, and they're literally stopping, like and it's right at this corner. So they're stopping, trying, waiting to turn in to get into these bays. And so during the peak hours of the day when people are getting off from work and there's a school right down the road less than a, a mile or so, you're just seeing like standstill traffic right at a light because people are trying to get into one of those bays. And so that's something to think about when we're addressing the fact that that infrastructure is, can only support so much traffic with two lanes. And so I don't know if more bays will actually assuage that, that issue, but uh, I think it will just encourage more people. They'll see more bays and it's like, oh, there's an opportunity for me to, to get into the queue, which is something to keep in mind, so. Thank you. Commissioner Bryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, 
just to in case some commissioners remember uh, the last time this particular piece of property was before the commission I had to recuse myself because we were dealing with both a flume amendment and a rezoning and I live within the notification distance for the flume amendment but not the rezoning so I, I just wanted to explain that in case some of you were wondering why I was up here tonight you're mr. 750 are you uh, well about 910 but <laughs> <laughs> uh, and living in the area and seeing what's happened around it I didn't particularly care for the commercial that was proposed uh, and City Council heard about that but I I personally believe that the townhome proposal is a better fit for this site than what was previously proposed and I'll shut up with that hey thank you Commissioner Bryant for the record you're always in a thousand with us <laughs> Commissioner Baker, and welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Um, so I have a few questions. Um, gonna take advantage of the fact that there are a few items on the agenda today. Um, first, uh, I see that commitments are in excess of UDA requirements. Um, you know, best practices would encourage a, a mix of housing, especially uh, missing, mi missing middle housing. Um, and I see that one of the commitments here is to limit this to um, only townhomes, so kind of a, a homogenous development um, with no mix of, of housing opportunities for people. So I'm, I'm just curious about why, the, why there's a limit on only producing one type of, one type of housing typology. Honestly, it, the site is really only large enough for one, one type. I mean, these builders, I work with them day in and day out, all kinds of different projects, mixed use, singles, towns, apartments, 14 acres. They just, most of the builders that I work with, they just got to have a certain number of units to, to be there. And I don't think, if you split the uses between singles and towns, one, you're going to service less people. Your singles are going to be more expensive than your towns. And, um, and I just don't think many builders would jump on that. Thank you. I'm also curious um, about um, roadway connectivity. Um, I know that this isn't something that we can necessarily add, uh, and, and it's, this is certainly not the place to do that, um, but I, I think that that's something that we need to be working on and encouraging is, is improving connectivity and making sure that we have um, short blocks, short block lengths, um, and when possible, we have things like, like alleys. Uh, I'm curious um, from the developer, if, um, and this is not a, asking for a proffer, but if there are any green building um, practices that are gonna be employed, if there's gonna be any low impact development that's gonna be employed in this development. Unfortunately, no, the um, market rate, um, most of the builders with their standard product, we won't have that on this project, I don't believe. Okay. Okay. So we have one, one type of housing product here and very little connectivity. Uh, lastly, um, I just wanna bring up the, the um, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. They brought up, um, they cited the UDO saying that uh, the development in the CG district should provide safe pedestrian access to adjacent residential areas. Um, currently there are no text commitments addressing safe pedestrian access to adjacent residential areas. Um, is this in violation? My question is, is this in violation of the UDO? And I guess that's for, for, for Jamie. So, uh, Jamie Sanyak with the planning department. So, um, they will be providing, uh, sidewalks in accordance with the UDO along the frontage of their property. That is the requirement. Um, there is also um, a commitment relative to, I think it's access point um, to A or B, I forget, um, in the event that the access uh, point is provided to the adjacent property to the west, which was um, approved for the self-storage, they would be providing cross-access easements there. Okay, thank you. That's all. Great, thank you. 
Commissioner Miller. I'm with Mr. Bryan. I was very much opposed to the rezoning on this property, same parcel, a year ago to uh, develop a uh, conventional uh, grocery store laden uh, strip shopping center. I think the, this uh, proposal is dramatically better. Uh, I have opposed the creation of a new commercial node uh, at Barbie and 54 from the beginning. Uh, all of Highway 54, indeed this whole area of the county that uh, that weaves in and around uh, I-40 as it skirts under underneath the city uh, is kind of the pinnacle of automobile des uh, suburban design. Uh, it's and I don't want, and it is very heavily commercially laden. There's more commercial, especially automobile-based commercial development in this part of the county than any other place, and we don't need more of it. Uh, the people who will live on this parcel will have probably more opportunities to shop and to buy groceries and all the other things that are missing in other parts of town uh, than anybody else that lives in Durham. Uh, and so we don't need another shopping center here, so I'm glad to see a townhouse project. Uh, normally, this is the when we see a townhouse project proposed, this is the opportunity that I take to talk about townhouse design and also front-loaded garages and all those other things that uh, give me heartburn, uh, but so thrilled am I uh, to see this turn away from what I thought was a really bad idea of, of creating a commercial node here uh, to one that is, in my opinion, a smoother and more contiguous line of development uh, for townhouses. Uh, I'm, I'm going to lay off that. Uh, and so I understand what's going on here. I'm glad for the opportunity to fix a mistake that we made a year ago, and so I'm going to vote for this for all of those reasons and some I have not articulated. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Kenshin. Uh, yeah, I voted last year uh, for this because I think the intersection is really problematic. I drive down Barbie Road almost every single day because 40 and 147 um, are impossible with all the growth. Uh, but I am pleased that it's going to be residential instead. I think that's a better use for it. But I really wanted to see the intersection get improved, and I'm pleased with the commitments I see here in terms of that left, that turn lane on Barbie and some of the other features I see on that intersection is gonna be vastly improved. And with the gas station, which is not our case right now, but you know, I can't wait to see that fixed as well because there's cars literally stacked on 54 trying to turn into that gas station and it's always a very dangerous intersection. So I'm pleased to see this is a great start, I think, um, and I like the use as well. So excited to see that intersection get fixed finally. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Williams. Yeah. Um, from what I read in terms of the text commitments as it turns, um, as it reads for the access points for um, access point 2A and access 2B, it says that if is decided upon and if it is determined, then it will be designated. And given the current congestion, the issues that are already on Barbie Road and that particular intersection, the overload on Highway 54 and Barbie Road, I believe that even though a shopping center on that particular lot may have been bad, then this is just the lesser of the two evils. Um, I feel like the impact of this particular intersection, regardless of the gas house that sits on that corner and people traveling through that area, is indeed the lesser of two evils unless you address the issue and putting a sidewalk on the the front face of the property to Barbie Road. I'm not really sure where that's going to lead besides maybe Highway 40 and the overpass or the apartments across the street or the townhomes across the street. So, I mean, even though it is a need, I don't think that it's necessarily a need to build new townhomes in that area, considering the fact that the ones that were just built probably aren't full. But that's just my personal thought process on it. And I feel like this is an opportunity to use land to build on it because the opportunity is there and Durham is growing. I don't know that it's necessarily a need. I would think that some type of, um, if you're gonna do it for commercial, maybe some type of, what is it called? A, uh, like a, a greenhouse where people walk in, like a community, you walk in, you grow your vegetables, you sell them and you leave, like that type of area to give people access. Um, you can't depend on the infrastructure to be improved, but so much. And with another case coming up, I'm trying to figure out how they're going to build more bays in there and where they're going to expand to because the drop off of the gas houses 
right there because of the new property that was just built and then whatever lies behind it and then what is across the street. So I'm definitely not inclined to vote for this for the obvious concerns of the stress is going to put on an already stressed intersection and neighboring for neighborhoods, the amount of traffic that's gonna be generated on Barbie Road 54, both east and west. So those are my comments. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments, Commissioner Johnson? Thank you, Chair. So just in response to that is, is I mean, I, I tend to agree with the, your presentation of, of the issues at hand, uh, uh, Commissioner Williams. My, when I put on my reality hat is that the, the greenhouse, the vision, the, what you envision as being ideal for that site is pop, I'm inclined to say it's almost impossible because the, the cost that, it, uh, that I'm sure that it took to acquire that land just doesn't make that feasible for the developer. Like real estate is just getting very expensive in Durham. And so the question is, I mean, even if you don't pursue the, high, the best and highest use of that site, something is gonna go on that site that's just not gonna be congruent with the current in infrastructure. And like, I think that's a larger ci a city issue. Like we have to figure out like how do we enhance the, the, the physical infrastructure in this area of Durham uh, along with how many other areas in Durham to support the growth that's going on. And so as we've shared with many uh, other applicants or opposition to applicants is that something's gonna happen on that site that's just gonna make it even not the ideal uh, outcome in regards to the congestion, the traffic, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's a question of, and I don't, I'm not saying that this project gets us to the best uh, outcome, but it's like, well, how do we try to mitigate as much as we can what is going to happen, which is that site is gonna be developed. Uh, and I don't have the, uh, the utopia answer myself, but you know, I just, it's just important when we like thinking about the reality of what's happening here. Some private owner owns that land and they're gonna do something to it sooner rather than later. And so it's a question of what is it gonna look like and what's the implications and the impact and do we have an opportunity to assuage the bad and, and highlight and enhance what we can possibly on the positive side. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Commissioner Williams, counterpoint? Yeah, I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but doing something just because eventually something will get done, that's going to cause more harm than good. And the way I feel about it is we can't always just say, well, eventually something is going to happen because our voice is to determine partially what is going to happen and to speak to that effect. So if we voice as 14 bodies or 13 or 12 or 11 or whatever the case may be, then it goes to another body, which they have the opportunity to kind of steer this entire process into where it may go. If it doesn't sound right first and it doesn't sound right second, then maybe a third will come or a fourth. At the end of the day, until something get approved, nothing gets built. So it's not necessarily a process of approving something just because eventually something will happen until there's a the right fit. We have the opportunity to do that, to get it right. Because it's right now it's sitting dormant, so it's not adding any more traffic or any more impacts because it's not being used. And right now I can't say, well, because the owner has done this or because the owner has done that, then you spend it until you get it right. And if it's the right fit, then it will generate its own revenue. Follow up. Thank you. And I'll uh, follow up and then we actually have other commissioners with questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. This let's, no, let's so in, re in response to that, and, and thank you for sharing those comments to staff, my question is, given what the current zoning uh, allowance is on that site, what is, what is the, the, the max, as we said, what's the, if you can do the largest development type on the, the potential property, on the property as it's currently zoned, what could the developer potentially put on that site right now without having to get a yay or nay from us on, on what they would pursue? Amy Sonyak with the planning department. The rezoning that occurred in 2016 allowed up to 160,000 square feet of um, uses that are permitted within the CG zoning district. There were certain exceptions to that. Self-storage was one of them, but that's what be the, the max on the site right now unless the zoning changed. So that's the reality. And that, I just wanted that to, to, to be on record that 
that can happen right now, whether we fall asleep up here or not, that, you know, something is going to happen on that site, and, and, and that's the reality. Commissioner Durkin. I just had a follow-up question for the applicant on the question about type of housing. You mentioned that single family was not thought about, but what about duplexes or quadplexes? Because I think that's more of a greater need than additional single family homes. I mean, that, that is a different housing type for sure, but that, that's a much different builder also. Uh, the number of builders who build townhomes as opposed to the number of builders who are gonna go and build duplexes is very different buyer pool and builder pool. Uh, the goal here was really to, if you were going to do townhomes, was you know, to get as many units as we can get. I mean, the townhomes across the street, they've sold out, and they were selling 15 to 20 a month for the entire time they sold. So they're gone. The demand is there. So we know the demand is there. We obviously need housing in Durham. We need townhomes in Durham and condos and apartments in Durham and less of the singles. So we felt like this was just the best we could do. Thank you. Follow-up? No. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Miller? Well, I wanted to point out there's no particular virtue in duplexes or triplexes. As a matter of fact, because they are almost invariably rental properties as opposed to home ownership properties, um, I don't favor them. I would like to see us in, improve the percentage of, of home ownership properties. Home ownership properties grow wealth, grow wealth for families, um, uh, where rental properties are wealth transfer engines. Um, uh, Townhouses, which are a form of multifamily housing, uh, are, are technically missing middle houses. Uh, I don't want to get caught up in these, these new terms we're throwing around. I think what we need to do is look at, at the way these properties perform in terms of, of how they uh, supply housing where we need housing, and also their general compatibility uh, as that's contemplated in our uh, comprehensive plan and as a matter of good planning. Uh, because of the way this area it has been developing, uh, even though it has been admittedly taking advantage of the counterintuitive uses, you know, you name a, a zone commercial, you name it uh, office, but you allow certain certain types of residential uses, it creates a dissonance that, that people have noted here today. Uh, I am thrilled at the way this corner is developing out. Uh, this is going to be uh, at the high end of what I would call, of what our comprehensive plan comp contemplates as medium density housing, isn't that right? About, about 10 units an acre, 10, 11 units an acre. Um, so, uh, and it, so we have a way of, we're adding housing, we're adding it at a, at a certain density, we are bringing the number of trips per day down by 8,000 on a facility that is already uh, crowded and is going to get worse. Uh, I see this particular project is a win-win project. And while I would like to see more commitments uh, about the actual townhouse designs, uh, I do not want to risk losing the opportunity to fix a mistake that we, last, that we, asked, uh, we created last year when we zoned this commercial or we approved the shopping center uh, by insisting on something I don't believe this developer wants to give. Thank you. Seeing no additional questions or comments before I call the question and ask for a motion, I'll say that I also agree that this is an improvement from my personal perspective. I do have concerns about the traffic from a long-term perspective, but I do think this particular issue does address some of the most immediate concerns, and I do plan to vote to approve it, but this is an intersection that's getting busier, and I, I do hear some of the other concerns that some of my fellow commissioners have raised, and I think we're going to have to pay attention to as we move forward. Uh, that said, I will look for a motion, if someone is willing to make it. Commissioner Bryan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we send case Z1800011 uh, forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Second. Right, moved by Commissioner Bryan, seconded by Commissioner Satterfield, even though it was close. Uh, why don't we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Alturk? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Baker? No. Commissioner Bryan? Yes. Commissioner Satterfield? Yes. Commissioner Durkin? Yes. Commissioner Hyman? Yes. Commissioner Busby? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Kenshin? Yes. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes. 
Commissioner Williams. No. Okay, motion passes 10 to 10 to 2. Sorry. 10 to 2. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Edens. Our next item is a case TC18 quadruple zero six. This is the private streets text amendment to the unified development ordinance. Mr. Stock. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael Stock with the planning department. Um, text amendment TC 180006 is a privately initiated request to amend uh, paragraph 12 to two other forms of access. Specifically, it would allow an additional instance where private streets would be allowed. Um, currently, the ordinance allows uh, private residential private streets in four circumstances uh, for, to serve a maximum of six single, single family or duplex lots uh, for multifamily developments uh, if shown on a development plan and within conservation subdivisions. Um, in this proposal, the private streets would be allowed for only single family developments uh, only within the county jurisdiction, so any single family development within a county jurisdiction only. Um, private streets must be designed and constructed to city or NCDOT standards uh, as applicable. Um, but they would not be maintained by either the city or the state. Um, the applicant is here to answer any questions, and uh, I'd also be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And can we, do you mind if we can see if anyone has signed up for the public hearing? And we'll move to open the public hearing. Thank you. And we have one individual signed up to speak, Mr. Mitch Craig. The microphone is yours. If you don't mind if you can come up and give us your name, your address, and make your statement. Yes, sir. Uh, Joseph M. Craig, 301 Glenwood Avenue, Suite 220, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27603. And I'm representing the applicant and uh, here to answer any questions. Um, the main issue for this subdivision is the majority of the subdivision is in Chatham County. It's completely developed in Chatham County with private streets. There's a private street that uh, comes off of 751. It serves the majority of this development, and uh, they would like for their streets to be private. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak as part of the public hearing? Seeing none, I'll move to close the public hearing and come back to the commissioners. Any questions or comments from the commissioners? Commissioner Baker? Um, so, uh, questions for staff. Uh, it's my understanding that communities that um, have historically been more liberal in allowing private streets are, um, in fact, moving away from that policy. Um, so, I'm curious, has staff conducted an assessment or held a dialogue with um, some other communities that have this policy? Um, and uh, or have you looked at what are the potential consequences of this policy if you allow it countywide? Well, allowing it countywide, it wouldn't be countywide, it would just be within the county jurisdiction, so it wouldn't apply to the city at all. Okay, county jurisdiction. Yeah. So um, the, really the, only, the negative impacts that we would believe uh, would be to the development, to, to the property owners themselves if they could not maintain it and then they went to seek uh, uh, acceptance from NCDOT because from my understanding is that it would have to be maintained. The reason why we require it for, to be built to city or NCDOT standards, so if they sought uh, acceptance by those, by those entities, then they're already built to those standards and they could be taken over. They would need to be maintained to a certain level uh, for NCDOT to accept them, so they, they'd have, there'd have to be a certain quality to the, to the maintenance of that road. That would be the, the biggest drawback. Okay, I have two other questions. Um, so as the city grows in population and municipal borders move out, um, would it be correct to assume that eventually the city is gonna be asked to annex um, some of these properties that have private streets and um, potentially have to annex properties in, in the scenario where the HOA fails, have to take over maintenance of those streets? Um, usually when we see a number of new developments that are coming in, um, they're already going in through city uh, annexation process, so it's pretty rare to see those kind of instances happen. Um, any new developments are going to go, again, th go through the annexation process with the city, and they'd have to develop through the city processes. So it's, but it's rare today 
but then we would permit private streets, so it might not become rare anymore. It still would be pretty rare. There's a good part of Durham County that is not likely to be served by the city in any foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and last question. Um, to me, this is this is a pretty easy no, um, but I would like to ask, are there other more site-specific alternative solutions to the problem um, that that um, that exists today for the applicant? Um, I'm not aware of any, but you could ask the applicant to see what kind of solutions they sought. That's all. Yeah, and Commissioner Baker, if you'd like, you, you can directly yeah, ask sure. them to speak. Yeah. Um, we looked at doing public roads, and the reason that they want to do private is because small subdivision roads are just not a priority of the city or the DOT. And uh, they have, uh, you know, in this particular instance, um, they have uh, the means to maintain them. In most instances, I would say that's the case because they're going to be developed as private, so people that are buying in that subdivision would know that those streets are private. And, uh, you know, frankly, it's just the, the biggest deal is just not a priority for the DOT, and that's, that's the biggest issue. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very much. Other questions or comments, Commissioner Outturk? Yeah, uh, thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a, another question for staff. So you mentioned that the streets would have to be maintained up to NCDOT standards. How often, I mean, do you have any sense of how often NCDOT does this? Do they go around and say, oh, these private streets are up to our standards? I, I think they're only going to look at it if they're petitioned to take over the street. Mm -hmm. okay. So That's it? That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Miller? So while you're standing there, in, instead of doing a text amendment, they could have applied to rezone this property uh, to a PDR uh, with essentially the same lot layout that's, that's on the ground, right? And then they could have had private streets under the existing code provision. Correct. Um, so there is a site-specific solution. Um, what this does, because I think it's, it isn't, immediately intuitive for me when we say for any single family subdivision we're talking about subdivisions that are zoned uh, between uh, our youth well I guess you we probably don't have any of those in the county jurisdiction but we could it would be any no you couldn't no in the county jurisdiction unless it's the for our you instance unless there's county within the urban tier mm -hmm. you couldn't rezone to our you mm -hmm. All right. So most of it you're going to see is RS2. So it's, it's unlikely that it could be RU, but we're talking about the single family zones that, is, right. that are described in the code. Uh, RSRR. That have the R, uh, the, the R uh, prefix and probably rural residential as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, but that's a lot of land. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the development limitations, if I understood you before, though, in the county jurisdiction, since we're talking about the county only here, are the availability of, of uh, water and sewer utilities primarily, uh, and the city controls those under its current policy. So uh, moving forward, uh, new sub subdivisions, I know there are plenty of existing subdivisions out there that have septic tanks or private wells and those kinds of things. We're not creating those much anymore. No. Uh, so those will come into the city, and once they're in the city, they could do private streets if they wanted, couldn't they? Or do we just have no private streets in the, the Private city? streets, it would be limited to very small. So the first instance that's already allowed, so serving six or less. Or PDRs. Or, or PDRs if it's on the development. And plan. we do a and lot of PDRs. Out. Correct, correct. So, uh, and we don't, uh, we, you know, it, my experience here is only uh, four years old, but uh, we have had very few cases that have, uh, have been two uh, R zones. Uh, you know, it's usually a PDR because of the improved flexibility of, of, of lot sizes and housing types. Right. Um, right. So I, I personally do not see a, a, a real threat with this private streets provision. Uh, I realize, though, it gives Mr. Baker, uh, whose expertise uh, I think I'm going to become accustomed to deferring to, some heartburn. Um, and there is a property-specific uh, solution here. Uh, I would like to ask the developer, if I may, Mr. Chairman, may. Uh, whether or not uh, they had considered rezoning this pro 
property uh, where they want private streets to a PDR zone as opposed to uh, this text amendment, which uh, runs from, from the Person County line all the way down to where you are in Chatham County. Because I think it is the extent and the difficulty of contemplating the consequences of so great a change that is giving or giving some of my colleagues here heartburn when we could have done something that was just for your property to fit it within the current code requirement for private streets. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, but um, some of the development is developed, is being developed. Can it still be uh, rezoned to a PDR if it's already been developed? If it's well, with a PDR, you would have to get signatures from all the property owners within the within the develop within the, in the site. So, if it's an area that is still controlled by one or maybe two entities, that might be easier to do. If it already has multiple property owners, that would be a more difficult task. Which would not be a problem in this instance to rezone it to a PDR. Um, it's just the time frame is probably the biggest issue. Uh, be frank, the time frame to rezone it to a PDR is more uh, than than this instance. Um, Thank you. I had not actually considered the the practical uh, implications of having to go get everybody to sign on to it. That's a good point. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? All right, seeing none, uh, this is also an opportunity just for any, either a motion or for a continued discussion if people have thoughts they want to share. I see a half Commissioner Johnson. There it is, Commissioner Johnson. I'm ready to submit the question. Thank you, Chair. So uh, just in uh, response to, well, just follow up to the, the, the comment about the time process. So if, if, if this was approved in, in favor of the request tonight, would it likely go to the council for a vote next month? Or what would be, yes. trying to get a sense of the shortest versus the potential longest. So if, if this happens tonight in favor, how quickly will the final affirmation we're probably, likely we're to be? We're looking at before the end of the year, yeah. probably November, December. Mm -hmm. and, because and of I, lead times and such. We're talking about the, the Board of County Commissioners. Board of County Commissioners, correct. Mm -hmm. And I and, may um, ask the applicant, so how many signatures would, at this point would you have to go back and get in regards to the alternative option, potential option of uh, getting the PDR with the private streets in it? How many, and, and then this follow-up question would be the process once that happens, but how many signatures would you have to go and fish out, fish out of society? Um, currently there's 40 houses in phase nine and uh, 16 of them are inhabited, so probably 16 plus 17, so the homeowners association would be the other one, so 17. And which, do you have an a, a idea of how quickly you would be able to get 16 plus one? Um, it, that would be fairly quick. I think it's the process that, and frankly, we, you know, when we talked with uh, the city and we've talked with the JCC PC as well, and uh, nobody felt like this would be um, a, uh, a negative proposal to anyone. So that's why we chose to pursue this first mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it's, it allows it, but it doesn't require it, private streets. It allows private streets, and, you, you know, most people don't, don't want private streets, so they would develop them to be taken over by the city or the DOT. We're, we are developing them to be... Um, per the requirements of the city and the DOT. So. I get the logic, I was, I'm just trying to. So based on this information, uh, upon getting all of the signatures, how quickly would the applicant, well, how long would the applicant have to wait before they are back before this body with the request? Uh, Jamie Sonyak with the planning department. So my understanding, and I don't know this uh, site 100%, but they would need to seek a rezoning, is that correct? That's what you're asking as to what the Right, and not, a, and not a future land use map amendment. I don't know about oh. So they would need to seek a rezoning at a minimum, future land use map amendment, 
is uncertain at this time. Mm -hmm. um, the process would be that they would need to start with a request for a pre-sub. That's a requirement before the zoning. If there's a future land use map amendment associated with that, they would have to hold a neighborhood meeting um, uh, prior to submission. Once they got all their application materials together, uh, then we start the review process. So ideally, the rezoning um, could be uh, in front of the Planning Commission, um, I would say no less than three to four months, mm -hmm. um, depending upon the type of application that's submitted. Again, I am not familiar with this application per se. Once the um, Planning Commission makes a recommendation then ultimately would need to go to the Board of County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. So they would ultimately be the one who would adopt um, the rezoning. Then it would become effective immediately. And final question, I promise. So in the case that there are some unforeseen implications, negative consequences with the decision we make tonight, what would be the retroactive response? Like, would it be that no longer going forward would subdivision, like if we had to roll back what we are what we would potentially agree on tonight how would that work if we wanted to address something that we are not thinking about tonight and so we don't want it to happen to future subdivision opportunity for having the ability to have private roads because x y or z is likely to happen and we don't want x y and z to happen not quite sure how to answer that question. Um, <laughs> possibly, possibly, may I try to reframe the yeah. question? If, Please help me. If we believe this is the fastest path forward, we don't see that there will be many, if any, unintended consequences. Let's find out, how, what if we find out there are unintended consequences and we wish to try to then remedy the situation? If it turns out we've opened a can of worms, we don't think we will, but let's say we do, okay. how would that move forward for us to remedy the change that we're making tonight. Is that an accurate question? Thank you for the clarity. Well, well that, that's something that we, we do on a regular basis with our ordinance and taking a look at how new provisions function and perform. Um, we do that through omnibus 10, 11, 12, 13, up to 20. You know, we haven't gotten there yet, but it's probably gonna happen. Um, so one of our jobs is to, to make sure that, we, that any new provisions are functioning in a way that we're at least anticipating or not negatively uh, impacting things. And if we see that there are negative policy implications or, or real world implications even to that, then we will make corrections to it and bring it back to you. Great. Thank you, and Commissioner Johnson, thank you, because that's the same question that I was sitting here thinking as well. Uh, Commissioner Durkin and then Commissioner Miller. I just, it's not quite a question, but I just, the the idea that you'd have a universal text amendment for a very project specific project gives me heartburn personally. And if there's a solution that is solely project specific, then I would much prefer that route be taken. Also keep in mind that um, the ordinance does allow private streets for single family up to six dwelling units. So I would think that you probably have some of those in the city as well. And, uh, you know. When I guess a follow-up question to that statement is, you said that most of the development is in Chatham County. How many houses are in Durham County in this development? Uh, that when it's completed, there'll be 91. In, within the Durham, Durham County, County one, okay. Yep, and 31 are allowed to be, to have private roads already because of the development plan. Okay. So this is just to make the other ones in that development private. Yeah, no, I understand that yeah. that makes sense so that it's contiguous throughout your development. I just would rather have a project specific application. Thank you. Commissioner Miller. So I feel the same way Commissioner Durkin does, but on the other hand, um, I think it's our job to actually to do the very best job we can to anticipate the, the consequences and to not go forward uh, if, we're, if we're uncertain but I also believe that with the people in the room, especially our staff, uh, the likelihood of very many unintended or discoverable unintended consequences when we vote is small if we, if we search them out and satisfy ourselves with the answers to the questions. Uh, I know Mr. Baker said this was an easy no, and so I'd like for him to articulate for me, to guide me in my voting, 
what the negative policy consequences of, of voting in favor of this uh, text amendment might be. Why would I vote against this? So we come across a lot of um, counties in our work that um, are experiencing issues with HOAs failing. They then have to take over the street. Um, oftentimes, uh, there's a situation where um, folks buy into a neighborhood not realizing that it's on a private street, look at their neighbors down the road, and um, you know, th say, you know, why am I paying my taxes, um, but at the same time, I have, to, I have to pay extra to maintain the street. Um, Wake County is experiencing this right now. Um, so, and then we see San Francisco where, uh, I mean, this is an extraordinary case where a private street was actually purchased by someone who didn't, didn't live in the neighborhood. And so we see lots of unintended consequences. Um, HOAs fail all the time. Um, you know, I, I totally feel for the applicant. And I, I want to find a solution here, but to, uh, to go ahead and change, uh, make a text amendment that applies to the entire county um, based on um, hardship being experienced by a single applicant um, on a single property does not seem to me to be the most appropriate solution in this case. Commissioner Miller? And I know we have one commission member here who has lived through the circumstances that you have described of being uh, a development caught with its trousers down uh, and left holding, and the, and the homeowners left holding, and the city left holding the bag. I was wondering if Ms. Hyman had anything she wanted to add to the debate. Only that, you know, of course, it's an issue that um, gives us heartburn because there are unintended, unintended consequences that happen to homeowners and when HOAs fail. So I've had, um, you know, I've experienced both, but to have, um, but to address it from an ordinance perspective does give me heartburn. So and only because I've experienced it. But I do want to point out that that was in the city and those were streets that were caught half completed on their way to becoming public right. streets through the subdivision approval process. So uh, voting against this isn't necessarily going to prevent no. homeowners from being caught with incomplete developer built public streets. Great, thank you, Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Al Turk, you've been very patient. Thank you, Chair. Sounds like we need to um, stock up on Tums uh, along with our water here. Uh, there's a lot of heartburn today. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I think I'm, I've been convinced by Commissioner Baker, and um, and I won't repeat why. Uh, and so I would be inclined to vote against this, but I would like to at least give the applicant an opportunity to, you know, if you want to have a continuance to think about it and. If you if you want us to consider that to, to do that uh, to grant that continuance, I think you would probably be happy to. But I, I want to leave that in your court. Um, I'll just ask you whether you'd like that or whether you want us to vote on it as it stands. Let me uh, let me confer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We'll give you a moment. Well, 
So I'll ask if there are any additional questions or comments. Commissioner Satterfield. Well, I just wanted to um, take a different tack. Um, we're looking at uh, individual requests to change an ordinance, and we really feel a lot of us like we would rather have um, a solution for that particular property as opposed to something that will impact multiple properties uh, countywide. Other piece of it to me is setting a precedent for an applicant who may not be able to meet um, their timeline for whatever type of a uh, situation they're looking at and so well you know we'll just see if we can't get the ordinance changed instead so that was just um, what I was thinking about that was on my mind thank you other questions or comments and, and you're welcome to come back up and I did I would just ask Commissioner Alturk if you don't mind just uh, repeating your question sure the, um, the question is uh, would you like a continuance or would you like us to vote on the matter today I have one more question or, one more question to ask. Um, Michael do you know of any um, developments in the county of Durham that are owned by HOAs that have private streets that have failed does the city know of any of those I'm not aware of any but that doesn't mean that there aren't any okay um, no, we wish for you to vote on it. Okay. We think it's uh, that it is a it's a good proposal. Um, I don't see any. We've talked about it for the last three months with the city, with the JCCPC, and we don't see any negative things that can come up. It's uh, it's not a requirement, and it's not changing the the ordinance. It's actually just amending the ordinance to allow private streets for a subdivision that is larger than six single family units um, like I said you could come in with six single-family units and have a private street and I don't see how it's any different than allowing an entire subdivision to have private streets you have more homeowners that pay into an HOA when you have more units in the subdivision um, and I don't see how that's any different than a is just allowing more units into a private street subdivision so, no, we wish for you to vote on it. Okay, we appreciate the input. Thank you for answering the question. Commissioner Johnson and Commissioner Bryan. Just one final question to the, to the, from, from my perch here. So what, what happens, what does your project look like uh, if this request is not granted? What does the final product look like? Well, well again, we can, um, it's, it's a mixture of things, really. Uh, we have a development plan for 31 lots that shows private streets that has been approved, which is, you know, it's adjacent to the only the only part of this subdivision that that uh, that can't be private is phase nine, which is 40 lots because it's already been approved. It's being developed. The previous engineer didn't come in with a development plan for private streets. Um, and that was one of the reasons why we were coming in is so we have private streets for phase nine. And I, I get that we can have a PDR and I get that we can have, um, you know, a development plan. And, um, uh, but I, I just don't see what adding this to the ordinance. I don't see, you know, the negativity to that. Uh, but it, it looks like a, it's jumbled up. There's some private streets, there's some public streets, there's some public streets that haven't been taken over by DOT yet that will be taken over by DOT. And then when we come in with a PDR, the Homeowners Association will take them back over from DOT. So, so just to be clear, so phase nine is the component uh, in Durham County that you're asking for the request. And so, and so in the event that you're not granted the, the ordinance change, the streets will be public, maintained by so, some of them will be public will and be some of them will be private DOT and then they will some of them will lead to private yeah okay thank you so it's you know doing this for for us is for uh, continuity but I really don't think that this uh, would be developer specific I think it would be a good plan for the county. If you have a developer that is willing to put in private streets and can do it per the ordinance, um, you know, 
I don't see how that doesn't help the city, the county. I mean, it's, it's, and we're really not talking about the entire county. We're talking about areas outside of the city or the county. Okay, Commissioner Bryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I've been listening and actually learning quite a bit uh, for the listening to the arguments uh, one way or the other. Um, my own feeling on the matter is, is that I, I trust that our staff has done their homework and has uh, thought of some of the same things that we've brought up. So from my perspective, I'm going to take a chance that we know what we're doing and, and vote yes on this, knowing as we have discussed that if we mess it up, we have a way to fix it. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? And if not, this is the appropriate time for a motion. And a reminder, we make motions in the affirmative, and then you can also vote against your own motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I will move that we send TC 1800006 forward to the governing bodies with a favorable recommendation. Properly moved. Do we have a second? Second. second. All right, uh, moved by Commissioner Bryan, seconded by Commissioner Williams. I think before we do vote, we uh, want to just give an opportunity for any discussion on the motion. Commissioner Alturk. Well, I'm sorry I raised my hand a little too late, but I'd, I, I would actually like to hear from the Transportation Department. I, I mean, I'm in a case like this where we know that NCDOT has, you know, limited capacity to maintain roads. I mean, is there a public, is there a benefit to actually having counties or subdivisions like this have private streets? I mean, just from a, not just for the subdivision itself, but for the city and the county as a, as a whole. Bill Judge, uh, city transportation. So this is a county case. Right. And it only, I was, you know, um, and so we are a city department. So I don't know that I can particularly answer your question other than, I mean, the state DOT is constantly challenged for maintaining roads all over the county, basically, that they're, they're constantly looking for opportunities to reduce their maintenance responsibility because there's never enough money to maintain roads. Okay. Thank you. And, and I'll say as part of the discussion before the vote, I've been on the fence on this issue. I'm inclined uh, to to vote with Commissioner Bryan, knowing that we have the ability to come back, even though I do share some of the concerns. I know the staff's thought about this and worked on this, so I'm inclined to vote for it. Any additional comments or discussion? Commissioner Johnson. I just uh, broke my promise to ask question. So to the, to the <laughs> applicant, one, one last question, and this may help me uh, think through. So can you give us a sense of the price point of this subdivision that you're developing, what's the price point of the, the units that you're building? And do you have a sense of what the HOA fee is associated to these units? I, I can say that the lots are going for, like, yeah, the houses are a million dollars, the lots are selling for 600,000. And so do you have an idea of what a, HO, a monthly HOA fee would equate to for uh, a, a lot unit? Can you repeat that for the, for the, for the record? It's fifteen hundred dollars a household per year, and currently there's one hundred and eighty three um, households that have been developed. Thank you. Okay, so I, I'm going to ask that we can just ask very focused questions. We've had our time for discussion. We have a live motion. This is normally when we vote, but I do want to allow further discussion. But let's try to keep it brief if we're able to. Commissioner Baker. Okay, um, so I just on, on the back of those questions, and I think those are um, good questions, but I just want to remind everyone that this is something that will apply to the, to the uh, county jurisdiction, to the enti entire county jurisdiction, not just um, in this one case. So just a reminder. That's a, that's a fair reminder. And Commissioner so, Miller? So I want to throw something out there that is I've been trying to decide how to vote on this backwards and back and forth. Um, one of the things that when I look at the current rules and the limitations there, they seem to be for private streets 
uh, are allowed, but where, where we allow them, we want them to be fairly small applications. So the exception to that, I suppose, would be PDRs, uh, and I suppose you could have big multifamily developments, but um, and even big um, uh, conservation subdivisions. But it seems to me that this would allow possibly uh, in land that's already zoned uh, for single family development in the county, uh, fairly large uh, systems of private streets. And I have to say there's something in me that uh, I can understand a fairly small system of private streets that don't necessarily, uh, because private streets may be exclusive, private streets mean private, you don't have to let it be just anybody drive on them. Um, there's something in me that says that while it's, it's appropriate to allow some of that, to allow a lot of that is bad public policy. Um, and because I don't have a very strong sense of, of how, of, my concern is, is that we could, one, one consequence of this could be is we could wind up with some large subdivisions in the county jurisdiction um, that are already zoned, uh, uh, single family, uh, don't have to come for us, we would never know, uh, no rezoning required, systems, big swaths of land that are sub subject to a regime of private streets uh, maintained by the state, but available only to the to limited number of persons. Mm, that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, and so I'm going, I'm going to vote against that, against this because of that. But primarily, I'm persuaded by uh, Commissioner Member Durkin, uh, whose argument, uh, if I understood it correctly, is uh, a countywide change for one phase of one subdivision is uh, not the way to go unless there is obvious countywide merit. Thank you, Mr. Stock. Just wanted to make sure we are clear that. When we're talking about county jurisdiction, we're talking about anything outside of the incorporated city. Parts of the city. Right. So just want to make sure we're clear on that. Right. Thank you. All right. With that, we do have a motion and a second on the table. And seeing no additional discussion on the motion, I would ask for a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Al Turk? No. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Baker? No. Commissioner Bryan? Yes. Commissioner Satterfield? No. Commissioner Durkin? No. Commissioner Hyman? No. Commissioner Busby? Yes. Commissioner Miller? No. Commissioner Keenchin? Yes. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. The motion fails 5-7. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, a reminder, even a failed motion will continue to the governing body for review and debate. That's correct. Yes. We are on to new business, and we have two major items. We have the annual election of officers, and then Commissioner Bryan has added items as well. Uh, on the commissioner and the election, annual election of officers, I'll ask Ms. Smith to help, uh, number one, remind us of the process that we have, and then also to open the election process. Hold on, I lost, I lost my place when I moved my notebook, so hang on one second. Sure, and I'll just note that, uh, and, and Ms. Smith, you can remind me if I get this correct or not, we have uh, one-year terms for a chair and a vice chair, and they can serve two consecutive terms. They are then term limited, and we then switch from a city, between a city appointee and a county appointee. That is correct. So I'm a city appointee. I finished my first year. Mm -hmm. uh, vice Chair Hyman is the vice chair and is finishing her first year having been chair previously. That is correct. Okay. So um, basically, um, you just said what I was going to say, so okay. um, we normally... It's on for time. Yeah. No, you're good. No, you're, you're right on time. So um, you are re eligible for re-election. Um, anyone, obviously, anyone else is eligible for election. Uh, I'll, as staff, we'll take the nomination, and I'll be glad to tally a vote for you if that's what you'd like for me to do. I, so. I think it's a, a nice way to go about yeah. things. Okay. So um, 
Normally, we go ahead and do the nomination for the chair. So who would like to I would to like to nominate uh, Commissioner Busby for chair. Second. Okay, and can I get a show of hands? Are there other nominations? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Commissioner Busby. Yeah. Mr. Miller, did you have something? Are you good? Well, I was just wondering if there were other nominations. We can well, um, <laughs> we, since we just or? voted, I, I withdraw my comment. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, no one else jumped I'm in with a, with a substitute <laughs> motion, so you should have probably had a, yeah, a, jumped in ahead of me, but so it looks like you got reelected okay, unanimously. <laughs> so, sorry, I put you in there. Um, now we'll take a nomination for a vice chair. I nominate Commissioner Hyman for vice chair. Second. Do we have any other nominations? Okay, can I get a vote, a show of hands, please? Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Enjoy your continued <laughs> seats in rank. Oh, You'll get I, a raise after this meeting. I, I think, what's double of nothing? <laughs> no, I, I did personally just want to say thank you. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed working with all of you and looking forward to one final year as the chair. And I think Mr. Brown had a couple of announcements. Thank you. Uh, something that, in view of the discussion tonight, people might find interesting. The North Carolina Department of Transportation is initiating uh, at least the information gathering phase of a project to widen NC-54 from 15501 in Chapel Hill to NC-55 in Durham. It's going to take a while. It's probably going to be much more expensive than they're thinking, but at least uh, there's a project number, STIPU5774. So we may get some improvements in that roadway down the line. The second item I wanted to mention is that I have another set of duties on the Board of Trustees at the University of the South, and I will be at a trustee meeting on October the 9th. Uh, so I would appreciate an excused absence. <laughs> Great. Thank you for the heads up, and I'm, we, we will remember to vote to give you an excused absence next month. Thank you. A commission. I'm right, sorry, go ahead. Speaking of next month, um, we'll make a note of that, Mr. Brown, for you, and we'll be sure that we bring that back next month for your attention. We do have several items on the agenda for next month, and I was actually working on that summary and didn't quite finish before I came up here, so um, it's rather long. Anyway, there's several zoning cases, I uh, not limited to, but including... Um, uh, Pinecrest and the Romp. Um, Which is a fun walk. Yes, and we have the continued um, future land use map change for Forest Hills coming back. Mm. And we have a couple of other items, several items on the agenda. So I'll send out a summary tomorrow. And if you have any questions, please contact the case planner directly or myself. Great, thank you. And, and <laughs> if, if you're reading between the lines, it's going to be a long meeting with a lot of hot issues. So. <laughs> Bring a snack. Mm -hmm. Bring a snack or, or or find a board like Commissioner Brian to serve on yeah. <laughs> requires your attendance elsewhere. Commissioner Miller. Check our uh, calendars. Oh, no. So, Mr. Chairman, I have a request, and it's a request uh, not only of the commission but of staff because I'm actually asking for staff work. Um, the North Carolina Independent, uh, the Indy, ran an article uh, probably three or four weeks ago about controversy associated with uh, development and rules uh, having to do with the with the open space uh, uh, land near Patterson Place compact neighborhood tier. Uh, would it be possible to get a kind of a staff briefing on, on that and the staff's perspective of what's going on there? Uh, how we handle the conversion of compact neighborhood tiers to design districts and the what actually happens on the ground we've seen it happen we've had one, the experience at Ninth Street and now it's it's happening in other places I'd kind of like to know be briefed on what's happening with these uh, and I read that article I'm not sure from reading the article I understood all of the issues we 
at least I received an email uh, from an, an interest group uh, associate who cares about what's happening over there. Uh, and I would like to ha hear the staff's perspective at some at some uh, future meeting, maybe not the next meeting. <laughs> um, and then uh, I also have to say that you know we're the planning commission. We have a statutory duty to advise the elected bodies on uh, what's happening in planning. Uh, and I have to say I'm a little disturbed to see that the expanding housing choices program is so far along briefings to the elected body. We've had no briefings at this level at all, and at some point I would like to have us have a, a, a briefing. I would hate to have the, that come to us as a 10 minutes per side public hearing vote, and then we're done. Uh, second. Too big a deal. Great. Um, for, for your first request the um, about the article in the ND, mm -hmm. I will check with um, staff, and we can probably get something for you on the November agenda. Oct October is fairly loaded down, and I'm yeah, not sure. sure we can fit it in, but I'll let you know at the next meeting for sure. Thank you. I think uh, Assistant Director Young is going to speak to your other request. I need to make it. Yeah. Sarah Young with the Planning Department. Uh, you are slated to get an informational item um, both on Patterson Place and on the Expanding Housing Choices projects, so those will be coming to you. Uh, they will come to you in advance of a public hearing. I don't know off the top of my head what the schedule says, but um, you will you will get briefings uh, in advance on both those items. Right. Those are already built into the schedules. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Hyman? Yes. Um, I wanted to make a statement only because I was asked a question about something that uh, happened in our community that I am very proud of and that I owe a debt of gratitude to the city of Durham for, and that includes the streets in front of my uh, house in our community. Um, I happened to move in one of those failed communities and the streets were not done and it was not something that we you know, were aware of, but I do, uh, I worked on that particular project and I just wanted to say, because I know that my neighbors could be listening and everybody else, that the city of Durham was able to complete those streets for us in conjunction with the new developer and it's something that we're very proud of and um, very proud of the way that we work with the city of Durham in getting that done. So just wanted to say kudos. Thank you. That's great. Any other comments, Commissioner Baker? Um, I'm curious about the um, zoning map change reports. Um, is there any way, can I, can I make a request that some additional information is provided? Is that within our review here? Um, I would be curious if in these reports we could see when there's a, a resident, an, an application for residential development, if we could see walking distance to um, schools, parks, and maybe um, a grocery store. Is that possible? Well, I don't want to add to you. Yeah, so I, I'm not going to be able to answer that like on the fly tonight. Okay. Because we have some Is that something that you going can on, but into? I will certainly look into that and report back. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Seeing no additional comments, I do again want to thank you all for your time. This meeting is adjourned. We'll see you next month.